Greetings and welcome back to Switch to Linux. Today we want to have a brief look at the beta release of Ubuntu 2010, the Groovy Gorilla. That's right, we have a gorilla dancing around in sunglasses on our desktop because at the time I'm reviewing this, they just released the wallpaper and it got pushed out in the latest updates for today. So you'll be able to see that. Now this is a, a short-term release. So this is going to be, I think, uh, supported until July 2021. So they have a nine month re release cycle on these. And these are the incremental changes that kind of test the new implementations going in between the two year LTS release cycle. So 2004 came out. There were always a few bugs in the first release cycle. The 24, uh, 2004.1 is out now, which has fixed a lot of those bugs and a lot of those issues. So that is excellent. And uh, what this is going to do though, is this is going to progress some of the software along in such a way that it's going to be rolling the system into a newer release. So if you're staying on 2004, you're going to keep the old versions of the applications. You're going to get the security and the bug updates. But if you go with the shorter term releases, like the one we're going to look at today in the Ubuntu line, you're going to get some of the latest features and functions. Usually this means that there's not going to be a lot of significant changes in the uh, desktop, but in this case we are moving from GNOME 3.36 to GNOME 3.38. And GNOME 3.38 comes with a lot of significant changes that are beneficial things, things that a lot of the GNOME users have been asking for, things that they've wanted to do utilizing some extensions now that you do not have to. Namely, you can organize your launch icons and hey, they added a restart button in the system tray. So hey, why not? So let's go ahead and have a look at this. And uh, what we are going to do first actually is I want to boot up and show you guys the, I want to show you guys the installer first and uh, just to highlight a couple small things in there. And so here we are booting the ISO. Now we do have the Ubuntu, we have the Ubuntu safe graphics, and the, we have the OEM install. Now I'm not sure if this is how they are going to run the grub menu going forward or uh, if this is just something because it is a beta. But uh, in the past, if you have wanted to do an OEM install, you had to do a little bit of uh, shenaniganry. You had to uh, first hold down your shift button so you can actually get to the grub menu and then you need to press your F4, change the setting over to the OEM install function. A little bit more difficult. Now you actually have the option to go right there. Again, I don't know if that's because this is a beta or if that's going to be in the final release. My inclination is it's probably because it's a beta because they really want the final release to be as user friendly as possible, which means skip the scary menu that most people don't know what it means. So when we launch into here, um, everything else on the installer is going to be the same, except they gave us a different install icon. And they took a line of their release notes to tell us about that. So let's just go ahead and have a look at what it looks like. All right, so yay, there's our cool new install icon. You can see what it looks like there. It is cool, it is flashy. All right, let's go ahead and have a look at what this looks like installed. All right, so here we are. We have landed on the login screen. You can go ahead and enter your super secret password. That's definitely not one, two, three. You have the um, the X is the default. You can go on to Wayland, which uh, if I were not on a virtual machine, I might try it out, but virtual machines don't work as well under Wayland. So we're gonna go ahead and stick with X for now. We do find that uh, the GNOME 3.38 is, is very rapid, very responsive out of the box. Let's go ahead and boot up before I do anything else. Let's boot up the system monitor, see what it looks like on install. Looks like we're running about 1, 1 1.1 gig of memory once it is booted up. So that's actually not too bad. This machine has 6 gigs of memory dedicated to it. As I said, we do have a restart button. Some people made a big deal about that, so there we are. And uh, the other major change inside of GNOME 3.38 is the ability to sort these guys out. Now, I went ahead and already sorted these just to test it out. I did find that it's a little buggy. I don't know if that's because it's an Ubuntu modification of GNOME 3.38 or if it's the, uh, the function of adding icons and things. If I start moving icons around, we might get it to bug out. 
uh, but we'll go ahead and show you what this looks like before we try and bug it out. So I just basically, you drop these guys on top of each other and then you can just uh, go up, hit the button up here to rename them. I installed the minimal version and then I installed LibreOffice. We'll, we'll get into that in just a moment. Let's see if I can bug this guy out first. So I was kind of bugging it out, just adding things and then trying to take them out. And then sometimes it would just not work. And then you kind of had to do this, hold it for a little bit. And then when I'd close this out, okay, it's kind of bugging out here. So it's kind of stuck. And then we get a black screen. It's going to restart. And that should give us a pop, pop up to report an error. So if it gives us that pop up to report the error, we will go ahead and report the error. But it was causing me, me some issues earlier doing that. Some things would get stuck. Maybe it's only not going to give us the error. Occasionally I would get some of the icons storing back there and it's fairly inconsistent. But I was able to throw everything here together, rename this guy Ubuntu Tools. I think language support should be elsewhere, but uh, just to play around with, uh, with the organization. So that's certainly a good feature that they have uh, implemented in. Now, as far as the kernel, this guy is running 5.8.20-21 uh, generic kernel. So we do have a, a fairly new kernel. This is going to give us support for some AMD uh, that we did not have before. It also gives us um, Thunderbolt 4 connection on ARM devices and things like that. So it's going to have a lot of good features. Now on the weird downside, um, there does seem to be some issues with repositories set up. Uh, maybe it's a conspiracy because if I search for what I always search for, these guys know I'm going to do this. Caden Live actually has the repository and the snap version in here. But if I went to search up GIMP, I only had the snap version. So I know that the uh, repository version of GIMP is available on apt. I actually found this when I went to install LibreOffice because when you go to install LibreOffice, um, then it was giving me uh, the basic LibreOffice base. This is a snap, but you can see that we don't have the full package to install. All of these guys are installed here. That's because I went ahead and installed the full LibreOffice package from the terminal. But again, it's raising some issues. Is everything in the repository or are they still pushing and driving the snaps uh, more than they should be? Not that snaps are completely useless, but we need to have the option one way or the other. So the other things that I've found in here that are a little bit different, we do have a different screenshot application. If I can find the green, no, not that button. I pushed the wrong button, folks screenshot application there we are we do have um, screen window and select a window uh, nice new simplified option very much like the Linux Mint screenshot option which is very cool Firefox has been upgraded to the latest version also LibreOffice is now on version 7 from the repository and so that gives us a uh, very modern experience with LibreOffice so here's our Firefox build Okay, we'll close the tabs there. It looks like I might have uh, opened it up twice there. Uh, LibreOffice, uh, this guy's going to be your 7.0 option. And apparently they did make some changes in Nautilus, although I was not able to immediately spot what those changes are. Uh, you guys involved in the GNOME development will know more about what's going on there. All right, so here we are. Here's LibreOffice. Again, I open up twice. I guess it's like not super responsive. Um, I did find things like the spelling checker were working out of the box. The uh, synonyms, like so like the dictionaries aren't there, uh, but that's easy enough to install should you happen to need those. All right, the other changes under the hood, if you check the release notes, uh, they did get rid of the NIS, uh, NIS basic authenticator for networking because everyone's, you know, most people aren't using that anymore anyway. And there were some issues involved in getting that to work with uh, some new updates to some software. So that's been dropped, uh, which I guess if you really need that, you can put it back in. But most people by default are not. 
All right, so you can go ahead and check out the Ubuntu websites, and I'll go ahead and link the um, link the release notes and such to the bottom of this video. You can go ahead and check those out if you want to download it. It is available for beta testing on all of the official community desktop environments, as well as the web and uh, the web servers. All of the basically all of the additions for Ubuntu are available for testing. So go ahead and start your testing. Report any of those bugs out that you find. Other than that, we're getting uh, we're getting a basic Ubuntu. It seems to work just fine and uh, not have any problems. I do like a lot of the new theming, new icons. These might have been um, new in 2004, and I didn't notice. But I just think it this is looking really slick. It's really really coming along as an excellent and mature. Uh, mature system, uh, definitely better than it was when it first switched back to GNOME a while ago. So uh, I'm very pleased with uh, with the changes that we are seeing, and um, you can go ahead and download it yourself to experiment with it. Leave them any bug reports, leave them any notices. As of right now, there's virtually nothing reported as far as errors, maybe a couple little odds and ends things here and there but uh, nothing out of the ordinary. So it does look like they're returning back to that time when they're releasing stuff that's actually good and ready to be released. Although that does usually happen on these, uh, these point releases because they are, um, you know, th these are just bug fixes mostly of 2004 and testing and upgrading new packages. So it's a very good uh, distro so far. Have a look at it if you are so inclined or if you think Ubuntu is the devil, just go ahead and give it the pass. That's okay as well. But I think all Linux distros, particularly all of the major Linux distros, deserve a little bit of air time and attention. And I think that they did an excellent job on this one. So thanks for coming along here. You can go ahead and check the website at switchtolinux.com for any more information about what we are doing. We are in the middle of redesigning the website. So if you do have some suggestions for features and things like that, go ahead and let me know while we're in the development process and I can much easier build those in now than I can add them in later. So definitely go ahead and give us that information. Thanks for coming along and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.